Welcome everyone in Facebook land, YouTube land. Welcome to GAQs or Jim's American Academy Cutters Virtual Open Admissions Day. This is one of our uh, one of our first actual live streams uh, about admissions, but we're here and excited um, today to explain a little bit more about our school, uh, what we do, um, what we can offer for your families, and just to give you some information so you can make some really informed decisions as you're thinking about what schools um, to decide on. Uh, first and foremost, uh, Ramadan Kareem and Ramadan Mubarak to all of our families out there, um, especially the ones that are you know observing Ramadan um, at this time. And we welcome you for being here. You could be anywhere else, but you're here with us uh, taking some time, about 45 minutes of your day today. All right. So I do have some wonderful, wonderful guests. These are my friends. These are also my coworkers and colleagues as well. Uh, so I'll first introduce our head of school. And our head of school is Mr. Mark Lentz. He's the head of school. He's the you know, CEO of the school. And he's the country lead of Jim's Qatar Schools. Uh, so, Mr. Mark, can you introduce yourself to the public that's here today? Happy to do so. Thanks so much, Justin. Um, like Justin said, I'm the, the head of school at GEMS American Academy. Uh, I have been at the school now for four years. Um, and prior to that, I was the director of the American International School in Egypt. Uh, prior to that, I uh, was a teacher counselor at uh, several international schools all over the world. Um, have a degree in counseling as well as uh, education. Uh, and I'm happy to be here with these guys today. Definitely. Thank you, Mark, for the introduction. Thank you so much. Next, we're going to go to the upper school principal, Mr. Eamon Gregory. Can you introduce yourself to the public today, sir? Hi, guys. I'm Eamon. Um, so I've been here for six years uh, at James American Academy. Um, I was a maths teacher originally, then I was an assistant principal, and now I'm the principal. Um, so, yeah, I've been here since it sort of started. I've seen the inception of this school and just seen it grow, um, and we continue to grow. Um, and, yeah, looking forward to meeting new faces next year. For sure. <laughs> for sure. Um, Mark, I, know, I don't know how you want to um, handle this one, but I know Miss Justine Wilson, our lower school principal, she is not here at the moment. She is enjoying some well-deserved time off. Uh, but if you can introduce her, since you work with her very closely and you hide her. <laughs> Yep, happy to do that uh, as well. Um, so Justine Wilson is our lower school principal. Uh, lower school is basically grades KG through grade five. Uh, and then Mr. Gregory is in charge of grades six through 12. Um, Miss Justine and I worked at the same organization uh, in the American International School, but she was at my sister's school, so I didn't know her then. Um, but I knew of her by reputation and was very excited when she was able to come on board for us as lower school principal. She's been with us for the last two years, um, but she will unfortunately be moving on, moving home um, to be with her family. And next year we have a, another colleague, Mr. Jordan Shear, who will be coming in as our lower school principal. Jordan is currently um, in Belarus, um, but I also know him by reputation because he worked at uh, one of my prior schools in Trinidad and Tobago. So we're excited to have him come on the team as well. Thank you, Mark, for that. Oh, well appreciated. Um, next is a colleague that I work with very closely as well. Um, he's a dear friend of mine. This is Mr. Alex Stineman. He's the Director of Admissions here at uh, GAQ. Can you introduce yourself, sir? Hi, everyone in uh, Facebook and YouTube land. Uh, like Justin said, yes, my name is Alex. Uh, I have been at GEMS for about four years, almost four years now. Previously, I worked in university admissions at both the bachelor, master's, and doctorate level. And um, I, I love what I get to bring to the team and, and uh, work with parents every day uh, to get their kids the best possible spot in our school. Definitely. Thank you, Alex. Much appreciated. Yep. And last but not least, it's weird to introduce myself, but I'm going to introduce myself <laughs> as well. Um, I'm the director of uh, parent relations and marketing here at Jim's American Academy. I've been here for a little bit over three years, and I think thank you every day, Mark, for hiring me. Much appreciated. Um, this is you know the best school to be at. Uh, I tell parents all the time during the tours of the school because I do the tours. If you ever see me somewhere else in another school, it's probably my doppelganger. It's probably my lookalike. Um, it's probably the wrong school, right? I only belong here. Uh, so my role here is, you know, a couple of things, but I'm a dedicated uh, parent contact uh, for all parents in our community. I'm the bridge between the school leadership 
and then also the parent community and their feedback and you know, constructive criticism. So I help advocate for you in those meetings and to bring your concerns forward. And so we can make the changes that we need to make in our school, or we can double down on what's working in our school as well. And so that's just the main gist of what I do and how it pertains to the parents. And so you always have a dedicated person when you come to uh, Jim's American Academy. I'm here for you and I work for you uh, to advocate your, your thoughts and feelings, all right? So without further ado, before we get into the overview of the departments and we go into a little bit of uh, some PowerPoint and Google Slides, I wanna say that you, know, you can list all of your questions in the chat, whether you're on YouTube or whether you're on Facebook. And at the end of this live stream, we will answer all of those questions and we will also highlight uh, the comments as well throughout the show, okay? So last thing too, make sure you like, you know, that you share this to other families that may be interested and just put some comments and engage with us or we wanna hear from what you have to say uh, from this live stream, okay? So without further ado, let's do what we came here to do, all right? So let's first go into the PowerPoint from our head of school. He could talk a little bit more about uh, what his role is and more from a top-down viewpoint, all right? Um, let's see here. Uh, Mark, do you have it there? As yeah, I should, let me see if I can share. I can see. One second here. It seems like it's still shared. Yeah. All right, just hold on everyone for one second. What we may do is go to someone else while we figure out this technical difficulty. Uh, so Mr. Gregory, we're gonna go with you right now and I'm gonna figure this out on the back end. So I'm gonna share. Hopefully so, it works for me. Yeah. <laughs> I think so. All right. There we go. You see it there, right? How do I okay. click through the slides, I wonder? Do I just go? Yeah, you will go okay. through just uh, yeah, the Google as you are on your computer, you'll click through the slides. Yeah. 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 Yeah, I see what it's doing. Yeah. Um, yeah, so just GAQ admissions 21, 22. I know a lot of parents have a lot of questions. Um, usually high school is the most popular one. With, it gets a bit more complicated as you go up towards university. Um, so just the first slide here is to do with um, our graduation requirements. Um, in high school, which starts in ninth grade and we finish in 12th grade, um, students need to have four credits of English, Math, Social Studies and Science. They need to have two global languages um, at the moment. We offer French, Spanish and of course Arabic. Um, PE, you have to have two years of PE credits, two fine art credits and two student choice credits. The global language credits have to be done uh, consecutively, which means they have to be done year after year. Um, but it really, you know, in 10th grade is usually when students start to open up and juniors and seniors have more options. And that's when we start to decide which subjects they want to go into in, in university and college. Um, as always, and, and most schools in, the, in Qatar, all Arab nationality passport holders are required to take Arabic every year and they have to take Islamic studies. Um, and we offer Qatar history in ninth grade. Um, and then, just sort of our AP program is one of the, the biggest questions that when Justin brings parents around to me. Um, so AP is essentially advanced placement courses. They're, they're un university slash college courses that are offered in high school. Um, it's usually in your junior year or 11th grade year that you take AP courses, but we've started to offer AP earlier on um, in ninth. Some, some students this year are taking AP human in ninth grade. Um, and as you can see in the slide here, we're actually growing by six courses this year, um, and we're going to offer 19 AP courses uh, in the 2021, 20, 2022 um, school year, which is really competitive for a school where, you know, in our high school at the moment, we only probably have about 250 students. So we've 19 to 20 courses being offered. And um, it really is that, you know, great variety and um, great options and, and, and students really get to pick what they want to take an interest in and go. And uh, as I said uh, in my introduction, I've been here six years and, you know, we've been building this program from the, the ground up. 
And the first question, the first year was sort of like, but who's going to be able to take these AP courses? College, university um, courses are really hard. What, what, who are the students who are going to be taking it? And we want to shift that now to what AP course are the students going to take? So what course are you going to take when you come into high school here? We want to be a college preparatory school. We want students. At the moment, we have 100% admissions into university and college from our senior years over the last two years. And we're on, on track to get the same for this year. And, and it's really about that. We want you to start deciding what AP course you're going to take and, and really shifting now towards us being that college prep school. Um, and then I think the last slide is just, I, I, I couldn't put all of it into one slide. I was like, you know, there's, you're always told not to put too many things on a slide, but um, we have done some great things in the GAQ community. Uh, the Eco Club this year, which is the top one there, I'm very proud of. They got us our green flag. So we're one of the few recognized schools in the country with a green flag. Uh, we're also one of the few schools in the country that has, and I think we were first, Justin, you'd have to correct me, uh, where we had a, a greenhouse. We have a greenhouse here on campus, which the science teachers use in their curriculum. Um, and then there's all this other amazing stuff that we do, the Quran recitation competition that we participate in every year, the GAQ Student Council that is basically created from students who want to have a voice and want to help change the school. And um, the Doha Medical Conference Review is one that uh, one of our competitor schools used to do, but this year they didn't do it and we decided to do it. And it was our first year doing medical conference. We, we held that. Um, and then there's numerous other teams. We have loads of sports teams from, from floor hockey to basketball, to soccer, to volleyball, uh, to netball. Our grade 12 internship program is very uh, unique. I don't think any other school in the country offers such a thing. Um, this year, of course, we didn't offer it due to COVID, but the year before we had 50 seniors in our graduating year and all 50 seniors participated in an off-campus um, sort of internship work, whether they were in a hotel uh, working with uh, staff relations or they were in being a chef, helping out in a restaurant or some of them were helping out in the army barracks and just there was a, a wealth of different experiences. Um, and then uh, the last one at the bottom of that list uh, would be the Interschool Battle of the Bands competition. Um, I would honestly go pay uh, to see our, our school rock band play. Uh, they won two years in a row. Um, they are awesome. They're called Steamgate. I'm sort of doing a little prep for them right now, I guess. Um, but we, we just give students a lot of opportunities here um, and we we really want students to come in, tell us their ideas and then grow the school in, in, in the way where it's student led initiatives. Um, and yeah, and uh, again, the GA community and one of the few things that we always get our reviews back on is just about the positive culture um, and you know, we are GAQ and that's our slogan and, and we want you to join us as well. Um, and then I've just, on the last slide, just Alma um, is basically our student management system, um, but it gives parents access to their students' grades, their attendance, all of our bulletins, which has all of our information for our after-school activities, our AP courses, our sports, and, and our whole school events. Um, so if you're joining us, we use that student management system and it helps um, just given that uh, parents that access to an online feature and students and access to an online feature where they, they get to see all of their information in one, in one portal. Um, and my contact details, if you want, um, I'll leave it there for a few seconds, is e.gregory underscore aq at jamesedu.com. Um, happily shoot me an email if you have any questions um, or if you want to get in contact and talk about our AP courses that we're offering um, or even our sports programs or some of the cool things that we do here in our community. Um, thank you. All right, thank you, Mr. Gregory. Uh, I don't think a lot of people understand that you're a lifer at Jim's American Academy. <laughs> You've been here for, what, this is sixth year, right? The sixth year? They keep, they keep paying me, so I'll stay around, yeah. <laughs>
I think we like it a little bit, right? So yeah. you definitely like the, you know, you definitely like the Irish ambassador as well, for sure. You know, you've been in our school for so long. You brought a lot along a lot of other great talented teachers as well. So really appreciate you uh, being a part of our school. Okay, definitely. So Alex, Mr. Stinman, we're gonna go to you next because uh, you know, um, Mr. Gregory talked about admissions. I think it's only appropriate for to go to admissions for you as well. So I'm gonna bring up your slide here. And Perfect. Yeah, up to you Looks now. Great. <laughs> Thank you, Justin. Um, <clears throat> yes. So as the admissions director, it's my job to kind of navigate everyone, all the pr prospective parents through the admissions process. That's, a, that's really the main uh, part of my job. So I want to give you a brief overview now. Obviously, you know, if you were to apply, I would reach out to you directly and give you a more comprehensive review. This is just going to be a bird's eye perspective. Right. So our main function as an admissions office, right? is to process all interests and guide families through the admissions process. And the process itself is something that is, is uh, formulated by me and my team and it's constantly evolving. It's constantly evolving to serve you better. It's constantly evolving to make sure we find, you know, the best students for the best seats. Um, you know, we wanna make sure that it's a comprehensive and a holistic process. Um, I also work as an advocate, right? My job is to kind of liaison between the prospective parents and prospective students and the uh, you know education team, right? Once we take all the data and we bring it to them, my job is to advocate for you. I'm always on your side. Um, we also, you know, in addition to admissions, we support parents in document collection, right? There's a lot of uh, documents that we have to have in order to stay compliant with certain legal entities uh, here. And, uh, and also for our own sake, we wanna make sure we have all, you know, up-to-date documentation. So you'll, you'll be receiving emails and calls to make sure that we have all of your documents up to date. Uh, maintaining school records kind of plays into that same thing. And then also uh, school reports and high school transcripts. Um, we assist the counselor's office in making sure that all students get uh, reports and that the high school transcripts are compliant with whatever universities your student may be applying to. So those are our main functions, but there's you know a plethora of other things that we have to do on a regular basis. As far as the team, uh, this is a bit of an old picture. Um, but these are definitely some of the folks that are still there. Uh, myself, I'm the director. We also have Seema Hamadna. She is our admissions secretary. She uh, assists with most of my responsibilities. Um, and, uh, you know, she, she does a lot of the paperwork. You'll be receiving a lot of emails from her about paperwork and assessments and things like that. And we also have two great receptionists, Suhair and Andrea. Uh, they will be doing a lot of the initial uh, communications with you. If you submit an inquiry, they'll also be doing a lot of things with transfer certificates and things like that. So you, you will definitely, you know, know them through the process. Speaking of the process, I'm going to go through that now. The first thing, step one, is to submit an application. And you'll see here, I, I placed a QR code on the screen. This will take you directly to the application. Um, and this is always the best way to get started, right? And it takes about five to 10 minutes um, and it uh, will ask you for all the information. And what it does then is it sends you to a uh, document submission portal, all right? So step two is the initial document collection. Now, when you get to that portal, after you, after you submit the application, uh, you'll see a whole list, a whole list of documents. Don't let that overwhelm you. Uh, those are things that we will need throughout the process, even post enrollment. But for to start, the most important things that you want to have is a student passport or QID um, and parent passport QID. OK, now, if you're an international transfer, don't worry about the QID for right now. Or if you're new to Qatar, you don't need the QID. You can do it with just a passport. But if you have it, please submit that right away. The most recent school report. Now, obviously, the school year is ending. Right. A lot of folks probably don't have the end of year report. Now, while we will need that before they start, as of right now, we can just have the term two report or the end of term one report even from this school year. So just the most recent one that you have in your possession. And then also there's an enrollment disclosure form. This is actually a digital form that you'll get in one of the first emails that we send to you, send to you as, as soon as you apply. This takes about five minutes to fill out, but it is required in order for us to make an admissions decision. So it's important you fill it out as soon as possible. After that, right, after we, you know, talk to you, um, you know, by this point, we'll have a few conversations under our belt. We'll have all the documents that we need. We'll move on to assessment. 
And for the assessment, we, we kind of do it, obviously, we're, we're dealing with ages from three to 17, right? So we have different process for, for all of them. For pre-K through grade two, right, these are done live with a faculty member, right? So we have a few faculty members, actually, who do these, who are pre-K through grade two teachers, and they will sit down. Right now, we're doing them all virtually because of uh, mandates from the ministry, but they'll sit down with you. Virtually, they'll interact with your student, um, they'll interact with you, ask you some questions, uh, and that'll help them make an admissions decision, okay? They'll take that decision, and then they'll send it to me, uh, and then we'll use that as a as a package, right? We, we look at a student holistically. We look at them, um, you know, from not just the assessment, but any school reports, um, any other, you know, pieces of information that we receive, you know, we look at everything. Grade three and up, right? These are, uh, we use what's called a MAP screening test. And MAP is a very, very popular assessment tool used in the US. Um, and essentially what it's gonna be is there's gonna be 20 questions of reading, there's gonna be 20 questions of math, and then there's a written essay, okay? And those tests will, um, they will spit back a score and tell us your students' grade equivalency in math and reading. And we use those, again, in conjunction with school reports, in conjunction with the enrollment disclosure form to make an admissions decision. They are not the only thing that we use to make a decision. And after that, step four is the final step, enrollment. Right. So after we do the assessment and after an admissions decision is being made, assuming that it's affirmative, we would then enroll your student. And it's, it's pretty simple. We make it as easy as we can. We need three signed documents, an offer letter, a homeschool agreement, a medical form, uh, we need those documents to be signed, and then there's a registration deposit, okay? Now, this just secures the seat, right? This goes to, once you have all four of these things, that's it. Their seat is secure. You have a seat in our school for whenever your data join is. Um, and that's that's pretty much it, right? That's, that's as simple as it is. We try to make it, obviously, you know, everyone has intricacies in their situation, right? And it's, it's my job to work with you throughout all those all those issues and hurdles that may come. But this is the basic process uh, that everyone everyone follows. Cost. That's it. That's it. All right. Yeah. There we go. <laughs> Thank you, Alex. Alex is wonderful at his job. I have a first uh, hand view, bird eye view of what he does. Um, couldn't ask for a better colleague, honestly, um, in our team. So appreciate your, your time today, Alex, on this. Thank All you, right. sir. Appreciate it. Now we're gonna go in the reverse order and go back to our head of school who's <laughs> gonna talk more about our school. And he's gonna give us a little bit of insight on lower schools since our lower school uh, principal, if you just came into the live stream, she is enjoying some much needed time because um, she's worked hard this year for sure, all right? So Mr. Mark, I'm gonna bring up uh, your, um, yes, hold on one second, bring up your presentation. So what I have to do, I'm using two screens here, everyone. So if you see me looking at another screen, um, that's because I am. Um, just give me one second here. All right. There we go. So, all right, all right here we go. Boom, there we go. All right, Mr. Mark, that's your slide, I believe. And so that ready is. to begin wherever you are, sir. Okay, excellent. Um, what I will do, let me make sure. Okay, that should work now. Um, so I did a, uh, a presentation really on, Eamon talked a lot about our school, Alex talked, uh, about how you would get into our school. My presentation is really oriented more towards why you would want to get into our school. Why should you choose GAQ? Um, so that's that's sort of my part. But wearing both hats, if you will, if I talk as the lower school principal, I don't have a slide deck um, for that, but I can reiterate a lot of what Mr. Gregory said. We have a very comprehensive American Common Core curriculum in the lower school. It's very uh, similar to upper school. It's very well-rounded students in addition to taking sort of their core reading, writing, math, uh, science, social studies classes, have access to art, music, PE, um, IT, uh, Islamic, 
uh, Arabic, and I'm missing one, but we have a, a um, library. We have a, a, pr a plethora of, of different experiences for them built into the curriculum and a lot of extra, well, in, in the normal world, if you will, a lot of extra curricular activities after school. Um, this year during the pandemic, unfortunately, those have been a little more limited. We, ha we have had some uh, virtual uh, after school activities, uh, but I really look forward to having that, that wide range of after school activities again. And then I think, um, again, similar to what Eamon said, probably the, the parent feedback I get the most um, from my lower school parents is really about the quality of relationships that their teachers have, not just with the students, but with the parents. Um, I might be stealing something uh, Justin was gonna talk about, but we sort of talk about a, a triangle. Um, a two-legged stool can't stand, you need that third leg. So it's not just about the, the parent relationship uh, with the, or the, the teacher's relationship with the students, it's about our relationship with our parents as well. Um, and those are, those are really strong, I think there's, we get the the highest parent satisfaction rate in the GEMS network. And if you know anything about GEMS, it is the largest independent education organization on the planet. And year in and year out, we consistently score the highest parent satisfaction rate. Um, I think my parents are smart. I think that's because we, we work with them together and we are a better school because of that close rapport with our parents. Um, and so that is sort of my lower school spiel. Um, what I'll do now is talk a little bit about the school in general, um, a little bit about our story and, and why I think if I was, a, I say if I was a parent, I am a parent. Both of my kids go to school at GAQ. Um, so I'm not just the head of school. I'm also a very proud uh, GEMS American Academy parent. Um, so, so why would you want to choose that? It would be helpful if the slides moved. Um, <laughs> multitask. All right, hopefully you guys can see that. Yep. yep. Mm -hmm. Okay. So we developed our uh, GAQ learning principles uh, together with our students, with our parents, with our teachers. This was a very inclusive uh, learning process that all of us were a part of. Um, we have five of those learning principles. They are developing healthy connections, goals first. So we think it's important for students to have a goal um, every day in our lessons, we have goals that the students have to know. We have learning objectives that they need to know about. Uh, authentic assessment and constructive feedback. This means that uh, assessment has to be genuine. It has to be real. It has to be a true um, reflection of that student's ability. And the feedback also has to be genuine and it has to be immediate. Effective use of time. Um, is really more about focusing when in our classes on quality versus quantity. Um, oftentimes you see uh, education trying to improve the quality of education in a school simply by adding minutes. Adding minutes doesn't, in, in our view, doesn't necessarily improve education. It's about improving quality. Um, and then probably the most important one, nurturing independence and inquiry. Um, this isn't about our teaching, it's about your children's learning. That is that is the ultimate goal. Um, similarly, a few years ago, we sat down with our parents, with our students, with our teachers, um, and got lots of input and, and came up with what, what values do we think our kids need to be successful in the real world? What, what makes a, a, an adult successful? And, and similar to those, there's a, a, a clearer overlap you might see with those learning principles is I think for an adult to really be successful they need to know what their purpose is what's what's their purpose in life what's their reason for doing something um they need to have the tenacity the the resilience to hold on to that purpose they need to have the innovation especially in today's world to think about how to achieve that uh that purpose as they overcome obstacles um they need leadership um and, and collaboration maybe collaboration is is an even better word than leadership because they, no matter no matter what job you do in in the real world, you're going to have to interact with others. You need to be able to collaborate well, and in order to do that, you need to be respectful. Um, they we also have decided that we are the Raptors. That came from the student council several years ago, uh, and in a lower school contest, they decided to name him Razor the Raptor. So this is you will see this on all of our uh, all of our different. Um, 
signage and, and just all over the school. Um, our mission to keep it simple that is we will be one of the best schools in the world and we believe the best schools produce purposeful, tenacious, innovative, respectful leaders um, to try and bring that in. And because we are the Raptors, we say we will, together we will soar to new heights. Um, we developed all of this in as part of our NEASC process. NEASC stands for the Northeastern Association of Schools and Colleges. It is probably the most prestigious school accreditation agency in the United States. Um, and what does that mean for us and what does it mean for you? Well, uh, it was not an easy process. It was a two-year process that, again, included parents, students, teachers, um, a, a really in-depth look at who we are as a school and, and who we want to be as a school. And so it was a, a great source of self-reflection for us as a school. Um, but ultimately, that NEASC, and, and just to sort of pat ourselves on the back, if you will, there's there's multiple levels of, of accreditation that you can get from any accrediting body. Um, it is unusual for a school in their first accreditation to get that highest level, which essentially means you're fully accredited. We don't need to come back. We, we trust that you're in the head in the right direction, and we'll see you again in five years. Um, I was really, really proud of my team that, that NIASC gave us that highest level of accreditation. That's a, that's a big achievement. Um, so for us, it's very much a source of pride. Um, what does it mean for you? In the United States, this is a, a silly analogy possibly, but uh, I don't know if you know the, the USDA, USDA stamp of approval. Basically, they put it on foods in the United States to say, it's good, this is legitimate, it's safe to eat. Um, colleges need, there's so many international schools worldwide, colleges need some sort of accreditation stamp um, from a school that shows that this is a legitimate school. It's not a newly started up fly-by-night school, that the learning that happened there was was real and meaningful. Um, and the ask is probably the best stamp out there that I know of that you can get that says that. Um, it is recognized worldwide, not just in the United States. And so it means when your child graduates from GAQ, they're really getting sort of that, that highest seal of approval that all colleges are going to recognize. And then a, a quick thought about trends in education. Um, and, I, and I think if, if you, if I didn't mention it clearly in any of the other slides, this is really, I think, what the main reason I would choose GAQ if, if I were, well, again, I am a parent, but in your shoes, there's a lot of good schools in Qatar. There's a lot of good schools worldwide. There's a lot of other competitors you could choose um, but I think we do what I'm about to discuss maybe better than, than any other school that I've, I've been a part of. Um, if you go down to this sort of second point, it talks about a, a trend. It, students used to be students. That was the word. We talked about teachers and students. Teachers taught students. Um, it was a, a one-directional learning environment. I am a, an oracle of knowledge dispensing information. It's your job to learn it. Um, that's the type of school I went to. There's many schools still like that uh, all over the world, but but that relationship changed. They started to refer to the students as learners, and the teacher is more of a coach. There's a, a term that came out in the 90s. I can't remember the woman who coined it, but they talked about being a guide on the side versus a sage on the stage. Um, it's not just about a production. It's not just about me dispensing information. It's about the student learning and me guiding them to that learning. Um, sometime around that, they started to talk about lifelong learners. It's not just enough to, to have a student learn in school. We need to give them the skills that they'll need to learn for the rest of their life. All of those are, are probably things you will hear other schools talk about. Those are common trends in education, but the, the rate of information in the world is changing so fast and teaching really if, if COVID hasn't taught us anything else, it's taught us that, that it, this was a really huge wake up call for, for the educational sector, that we need to do some things differently than we have in the past. And really, what does it matter what a student's learned if they can't produce something useful with that? And so really now we talk about our teachers being production facilitators. It's our jobs to help the students gain the information that they need but more importantly, we need to help them become a person who can produce something useful with that. And the main reason for that is 
75% of the jobs that our graduates or our elementary school students are doing are 75% of the jobs that our elementary school kids will have don't exist. Um, when I was a kid, there was literally a big book when you wanted to go to college. It was a big book that had all the jobs in the world and you can flip through it and pick one. I know many of you out there listening right now have ideas in mind. My child's gonna be a doctor or a lawyer or an engineer um, or a pharmacist or a pilot. Those are all jobs we know about. Those will entail about 25% of the available jobs in the job market when an elementary school kids graduates in the next 15 years. The jobs that they'll be doing, we don't know what they are. Um, so we need to teach them differently than, than the way I, I was taught. We need to teach them the skills to be able to innovatively um, address those new jobs and be able to produce something. Um, so, and I, I think I'm a little biased. I'm the head of school, but I think we do that better than any other school I've ever been at. Um, and I hope that's a reason you will consider choosing Gems American Academy. Justin, that's it for me. All right. Thanks, Mark. Appreciate it. Um, one thing I'll say about Mark, uh, Mark is a, a doer and he's an achiever at the same time. So he doesn't just talk it. Um, he's really active. He's out in the front forefront. Um, he also has his principles out in the forefront. So when the regular world, uh, pre-COVID world, you can approach him every morning. You can approach the principles every morning. You can ask any question you want to ask. You can high five him, you shake his hand, you just talk and shoot the breeze with him. You know, that's the kind of principal head of schools that we have here. Um, in our school. So I'm very proud of that because I've been around a lot of uh, principals who've been keyboard warriors who stay in their office and don't really come out. Uh, they just write memos and wonderful letters and things like that. I can't say that here at this school. So thank you so much, Mark. All right. Thanks, Justin. So I really miss that, by the way. I'd love to see people back on campus and oh, give some more ideas. I miss I you guys. I would do almost anything to see that. Yeah, <laughs> for sure. It's a different energy. You know what I mean? Different energy. So I guess I'll go. I guess I'll have a little presentation as well. I guess I'll see what I can share with you all in terms of, you know, the parent relations side of things, right? And so let me take some time to pull up my presentation. So let me share my screen here. Give me one second. Um, let's see what it looks like. So you see it here, and then we'll put it from the beginning. There you go. Boom. All right. So I have two screens. And I guess I'll go back. I have two screens here. So if you see me looking to one side, that's because of that. All right. So again, this is uh, Mr. Tyler. I'm the parent relations uh, person and contact in the school. So I'm going to go ahead and talk a little bit about my department. But before we go ahead, let's overview what I'll discuss. Uh, we'll briefly discuss uh, what the parent relations department consists of in terms of the personnel and what we do. Uh, we'll talk a little bit about uh, the corporate discounts and how we're looking to help families as much as possible um, through this time, um, and then also the Refer a Friend program. And so this is a thank you that we give to parents um, that is also a tuition discount uh, for families as well. And so this has been very successful in our school so far because our parents are our biggest ambassadors. And the last but not least, I want to go and talk about how far we have come in the last seven years because we've only been here for seven years. So in terms of like a student, we're like a uh, grade two student, <laughs> you know, very young, we're in elementary school, uh, but we've done a lot of things in seven years, all right? So let's talk about it, let's go ahead. So parent relations, what do we do? So there's two different components. We have the receptionist, our wonderful receptionist, Andrea, and also Suhair, um, and they are the first line of impression and communication with guests. So any type of stakeholders, any type of guests, whether it's the phone, whether it's email, whether it's in person, you'll see them first when you come into the school. That's just how it's designed. And so we're looking for them to answer any questions and be you know, the proper customer service agents that they were hired to be, all right? So the second thing is trusted communication source with our entire community. So there's nothing that the receptionists don't know. They have to know a lot because parents are gonna call and ask and inquire about all this information that they've they seen in the newsletter, they've seen in emails, uh, they heard rumors, you know, things like that. Usually parents go to the receptionist first and then they come to me or they go to anyone else who can listen <laughs> in that time as well. Uh, but they are the front line for information as well. Uh, they collaborate with myself. They collaborate with the missions to do a lot of our tasks. And so our missions team and, our, uh, and myself as a parent relations uh, director, 
we rely on them a lot. So they're not just, you know, ladies who just sit there, answer phones, transcribe messages and, you know, sit on their backs. No, they're doing a lot of work, you know, without them, I couldn't do my job as well as I do it. And I'm sure Alex can do his job as well as he does it as well. And the ultimate goal is just 100% positive customer service experience. For me, um, that's one of my pet peeves. I, I, I can't stand bad customer service. I just can't. So no way, no how our team is not going to give you good customer service. Even if the information is bad, you're still going to feel like, hey, at least they gave it to me in a respectful manner. They told me honestly, you know, what was going on. You know, things like that. We're very much, you're going to get that good experience here positively. And then for myself, I keep it short. I'm just your dedicated parent contact for any questions you have. And I'm your advocate uh, between the school leadership and then also the parent community. And then I do a little bit of hosting school-wide events. This year, couldn't do it. Last year, Spring Fair, we couldn't do it either. Um, so we usually do like on-campus events, but we have to make it virtual now. Um, so that's a little bit different. Uh, we also help with the school marketing strategy. Uh, so you'll see us on social media. Uh, you'll see us around town, uh, different marketing strategies all around uh, Qatar. Um, you'll, we also I oversee the front of house and receptionist team. Uh, when I say oversee, it's really just the receptionist team. Um, Alex and Seema work together. Uh, I oversee directly with the receptionist. And then assistant missions team with anything in terms of student registration. We all work together. We all cross train so we know what each person does. All right. So this is a little bit of a snapshot of what we look like. You know, this is me, uh, a couple pounds lighter. <laughs> you know, this is an old picture. <laughs> this is the COVID weight. But uh, no, just all jokes aside, this is the team. Um, we're missing Miss Andrea because she's new to our team. Uh, but just so, so you know the diversity uh, of our team, both Alex and myself are from the U.S. Uh, Seema is Jordanian, Sahara is from Tunisia, and Andrea is from Romania. All right. So we have a very much a diverse uh, faculty and staff as well as student body. And we'll talk about that a little bit later. And so the next part of this is the corporate discount. So there's two ways this has come about. So when we first opened, we had some historical uh, agreements, uh, I guess historical agreements with uh, companies, and um, we were able to do you know, these tuition discounts, okay? But then new thing that we're looking at now is saying, okay, if a company wants to partner with us and to do a corporate agreement, we're happy to talk to them, you know? So, if, you know, if your company, you know, wants to do something for you as in terms of tuition discount, um, you know, and, or you're interested as a parent to talk to your employer, tell them to come see us, right? Email myself and I'll work with them to see if we can come up with any type of uh, corporate uh, agreement. So that's something new that we're doing as well. And it just has to make sense for both parties, but we're going to do our, our best to help our families, you know, uh, bridge the gap financially, you know? So... For right now, it's funny that I'm looking at this list because some companies were added like recently. Like I'm looking at Manai that was added last week. You know, so this is a very fluid list. But you can see that it's Al Jazeera Media Network. You have Hamad Medical Corporation. You have Manai, Ministry of Public Health, Nawafar Hospital, Arido, uh, Primary Health Care Corporation or PHCC, uh, Cutter Airways and its subsidiary. So any subsidiary of Cutter Airways is also privy to the 10% discount. Uh, Cutter Foundation, Cutter Petroleum, and its subsidiaries as well, and then also Sidra Medicine. So again, this list is fluid, but this is what we have right now in terms of the uh, current corporate agreements for the 2021-2022 school year. All right. Next, talked about the thank you program or the refer a friend program that we have at GAQ. And so this is a way for families to introduce other families to our school. And if that family, you know, does the application, kids pass the assessment, and they take the enrollment uh, in our school, then the family who referred them, the GAQ family who referred them, um, can get 4% tuition discount for one of their students. And so thank you that we do to help the parents and to say, you know what, we appreciate that, you know, bringing more uh, families into our school. So how does it work, right? So you have a chance to earn back a minimum of 4% and up to 100% of your child's annual tuition. So you're like, up to 100%? That seems too good to be true. Well, if you work in hard and you know a lot of people in your network and you refer them and they get into our school, you may be able to get 4%, 8%, 12%, 16%, 20%, 25%, 
20%. This depends on how many people uh, pass the assessment and take up our enrollment offer, you know? So it really is limitless in terms of how much, um, in terms of your discount and also how many people that you can refer to our school. And so basically there's a form for that family that you, uh, that you refer and they would just have to write your name down on that registration form as you're the family that referred them to the school. And then Alex and his team will do their part to uh, make sure that 4% discount is applied at some point uh, throughout the year. And if you have any other questions, Mr. Alex is the best point of contact for this referrer friend in the discount. So his email address is here on the screen. And as well, this is for new families. If you're looking to come into our school or you're gonna be a family in our school for 2021, 2022, this will start for you at the start of the school year, okay? But for current families that are here, it starts with them already. They can do it effective as today, all right? But for new families that are coming in, it's gonna start at the, at the beginning of the 2021-2022 school year, all right? Um, in the last slide here, we have come a long way in seven years. So I'm gonna say something, Mark might get mad at me, I don't know, but to me, when he came into the school in 2016 in March, everything just kind of went skyrocket, <laughs> you know, up, 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 up. So obviously our head of schools before and our leadership team before, they set the foundation for Mark to run the way he has. But as soon as he's uh, been here, all of these bullet points actually have Mark's stamp on it because he's seen these through. He has been here through the tenure of all of these being here. So this is um, a testament to him and his leadership. Uh, but as you see here, I'm not gonna name every single bullet point here, but you can read this for yourself. There is a lot that been, has been going on positive as well. And the one thing I will point out is that this wouldn't be possible without our parents because our parents tell us the honest, the real constructive criticism. <laughs> and I love our parents for that because that only makes us better. And I believe in iron sharpening iron. I really believe that, you know, so we wouldn't get better without their input. And we request their input, you know, periodically throughout the year. And I'm that dedicated person who gets that input a lot, just, you know, whenever parents want to talk to me as well. And so they're a testament to what we have done in the past seven years, as well as our dedicated staff and teachers as well. All right. And then just to some of the pictures um, that I want to share on the left, you'll see the eco club. And when they receive their uh, green eco schools, green flag award, we're one of the, I think third school in Qatar to have this prestigious international green flag award. This means a lot. Um, in terms of environmental sustainability. And there's a lot of rigor that goes into it that these kids put their heart and soul pre-COVID and during COVID as well to get that flag. And then Miss Ballant in the middle, she was a teacher supervisor. And if anything you learn in this whole presentation, it's a student driven teacher supported type of ethos in our school. So we're not gonna be doing things for the students and so they don't learn. They're gonna learn through trial and error. They're gonna learn by putting themselves out there, tactile learning, right? Inquiry, research, failing forward, right? They're gonna do all these things. And the teachers are like Swiss cheese, right? They fall through that hole, we're catching them. And then we're gonna to talk to them, give them their knowledge and release them back in so they can continue going forward. And so that's a testament to Miss Balance and also to the kids' will and tenacity is one of our core values. On the right-hand side, you'll see one of uh, the parents here uh, from the Chinese community in our school, they're doing a traditional dance in front of the school for United Nations Day. And so I missed this so much because this is pre-COVID when the school was packed, <laughs> packed with all these different stalls that you can go to. You're literally going and traveling to different countries and you're tasting their food. You're getting uh, the, the artifacts and information uh, from the country. You're seeing the way they dress. You're hearing language. You're, you're just talking to different parents and, and hopefully you're you're making new friends. So this is an event that we miss and that can't be duplicated virtually, it cannot. So just showing you some pictures of what we have done uh, currently and in the past. And in conclusion, visit our website. It's amazing. I think it's amazing. I'm gonna boast about it, right? I, I really love the way it looks. Um, so check it out. So GAA-Qatar.com. Uh, that stands for Jim's American Academy guitar.com. Check us out on social media. We got some really cool things that's going on there. And we are GAQ. That's the hashtag that unifies everything that we do. And then email my team. If you have any questions about this live stream, uh, you have questions about the parent part of it and the ambassadorship of the parents, email myself. If you have any questions about the school, email the reception team. 
And in um, observance of Ramadan, right, we are not open until the 19th, which is Wednesday the 19th. So we'll re restart our hours at 7.30 to 3.30 p.m. on the 19th. And you can see our phone numbers here as well. And yeah, that is it. So I'm going to stop the screen share. And if you have any questions, please put it in the comments, all right? If you have any questions, please put it in the comments. So let's go ahead and move forward with the presentation, all right? And so I wanna hear from everyone else because I talked a little bit about what makes our school unique. So not in any order, what makes this school unique? Because everybody has 100 different answers to this question. So I just want everyone else to hear on this live stream in your opinion, what do you think makes the school unique? Um, I'll go first, I guess, because uh, I haven't talked in a while. <laughs> 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 go first and wait till the end. Um, yeah, I think you, Justin, and Mark hinted at it, but it's, um, you know, as an educator myself and as a, you know, an educational leader, um, all of the research and everything that I've ever studied has, uh, you know, push teacher autonomy and giving teachers that chance to, to open up and to teach in their own way, trust them as professionals. Um, and I have to say, I think in addition to that, we have that that, that teacher and student autonomy. Um, we are very open to, to new things and growing here and listening to ideas and, and what students want. Um, one of the ones that I, I just mentioned briefly earlier was the, the medical conference. Um, that wasn't because we sat down as a staff and decided that we wanted to do this medical review conference. Um, it was a student who had participated in one um, a few years ago and she mentioned it to her teacher and the teacher was like, I don't know, we could do that. Maybe let's let's see what Mr. Gregory says. And I think within five minutes of them being in my office setting up a meeting, I was like, yeah, let's, let's do that. Let's see what, what it takes to, to do that and, and, and really just sort of completely independent, uh, student driven with some teacher supervision and, and we managed to pull off uh, uh, during COVID, um, you know, a Zoom conference with medical experts and a whole thing and panel and, and prizes. Um, yeah. And that all purely came from a, a student's idea and a student's drive. Um, so it's a good sign when, when we have that here in a school where, where you know, the, the the students feel like they're comfortable enough to come to us with new ideas because they know that we we respect their their opinions and and we want to grow with them and um, and that's really why why i think the school is unique and it has been and why it's doing so well and um, really is punching its weight uh, it's only been open for six years upper school and, and we offer a lot right now for a school that's only six years in and um, so yeah that was a great example, um, uh, Mr. Gregory. Uh, that, that student did a wonderful job getting everything together. And then uh, one of our teachers, Ms. Muna, she was just supervising it. But that teacher took it, I mean, that student took it by the reins and really yeah. did a wonderful, wonderful job. I really have to point that out. So that's a really good example. Yeah, and our valedictorian a few years ago was another great example of the Kinecon yes. event, which was um, a conference. Um, he basically wanted to set up a conference. We had Mr. Q, uh, he's basically a celebrity here in Qatar. Um, if you don't know Mr. Q, you need to uh, follow him. But uh, he he basically came and we had other people, very important people in Qatar came and presented. And it was all student-based and student-run. And, and we gave, again, that valedictorian, Andrew Jose from grade, tw uh, grade 12 in 2019. Um, he basically came in and he, he wanted to do that. And there are the things that now I will say as well, just as a side note, um, they are the things that universities are looking for. Um, they're not looking for that 4.0 GPA anymore. Um, that is important, but it's not the be all and end all. What they're looking for is, well, what did you do for the school and, 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 and what type of small projects did you do? And, and like us being a school right now, I think we're giving students the autonomy and the space to be creative and to, to, to process those type of things. Um, and that really makes them competitive on the international level, getting into universities and colleges. Yeah, I'll also piggyback on that. The autonomy that you spoke of, Eamon, I think is so unique. And then, you know, from a student perspective, it makes a lot of sense, but also from a staff and faculty perspective, you have so many, what the autonomy really reads and why we're able to give that is because of the passion that I see on a regular basis in the staff 
and in the teachers. And that really just pours into the students. Um, and you see these kids who are then empowered to go out and, you know, uh, accomplish some of the things that you uh, talked about. Uh, so that's definitely something that I appreciate about working in the school. The other thing I would say that makes us so unique is just the diversity of the student body. You know, and I, I come from, uh, I went to a public school in the States and uh, I actually, my first two months at GEMS, I worked in upper school and I worked with some of the students. And it, the, the feeling even four years ago when I first got here is it really just felt like an American school. I was plopped down in the middle of, you know, the desert of, of Qatar. Um, and it really had that feel because that's how the teachers, that's how the teachers presented it. Uh, but just with an incredibly diverse student body, right? We have over 80 different nationalities here and that's only grown since I've, since I've been here. Um, so what you get is, you know, that feel of an American school, but just with students from all over the world that can share in its vision, that share in its educational um, promises. And, uh, you know, for me, that's just so unique, being able to work with the students, but also now in my current role, it's something that has, that has not changed. And then Mark, do you have anything to say about, yeah, go ahead. Yeah. Muted, is he? Yeah, muted, muted, yeah. Yeah. yeah, sorry about that. Yeah, I can definitely build on both of those things. Um, you know, Alex talked a little bit about the feel, um, the, that American feel and the, the positive relationships. Eamon talked about autonomy and, um, you know, Justin said some very kind things about me. Thank you very much, Justin. Um, but I, I think the thing that, that I, I think really sets us apart. Um, I can't take any credit for it because it existed before I got here. And it's, it is that feel that those guys are talking about. Um, the minute you walk in the building, it's just got a very warm, welcoming, happy feeling about it. The, the institution itself, um, the, the reason we chose developing healthy relationships as our number one learning principle um, isn't because it didn't already exist. It was to maintain something that I think really is, is the strongest asset of the, of the school. Um, and I'm a firm believer that, that a school is judged by the caliber of the, the people inside it. Um, we have amazing facilities, but lots of schools have amazing facilities. Uh, if you fill those amazing facilities with mediocre teachers and naughty children, um, you might not have a very good school. But if you fill it, if you fill it with the best caliber of uh, teachers, and, and kind-hearted, motivated students, um, then you've got GAQ. Um, and that, that existed before I got here. And we have done a tremendous amount of work over the last four years in order to grow the way we have. Um, but in every meeting, one of the things I say is we can't lose that. We can't lose that single thing that I think for me sets us apart and defines us. And, and it's the really positive, healthy, supportive learning environment um, where kids thrive and, and have that independence. Um, and, and I think that's something we've, we've maintained and, and will continue to maintain for your students as well. All right. Thank you, everyone, for your wonderful uh, guest responses on this as well. I know we have a lot more to say, but um, you know, we have time left that we now have to give to the Q&A section. All right. Parents have been waiting eagerly and anxiously, right, patiently, for some of their questions to be answered. So we're now at this point of the conversation. So I'm gonna start with our first question and move from there. And then if any of you look at the question, uh, panelists, whoever is the best to actually <laughs> answer the question should probably just jump right ahead and answer that question, okay? So here's the first question here from Mr. Omer. When you say Mr. Lentz is the head of school of gym schools in Qatar, does that mean that there is more than one gym school in Qatar? If so, what are the other ones? I can answer that one, uh, per se. So, Mr. Omer, um, Mr. Mark is the head of Gym's American Academy, head of school here, and the CEO of the school. There's also a sister school that we have right next door. That's Gym's Wellington School. So, you want the American school, and you want a Gym's American school, we have that. If you want a Gym's British school, we also have that next door as well, okay? So those are the two schools right now that are currently in Qatar. And then Mr. Mark also, he's a country lead for both schools as well. So he also consults with the head of school there at Jim's Wellington. Um, and then he also is the head of school and the lead for both of the schools 
as well. So hopefully that helps answer your question there. All right. So now let's head to the next question. So uh, Ms. Almir, I'm wondering how the attendance will be for kids in KG in this pandemic. All right. And so, um, Mark, would you want to answer this question here that's on the screen? Yeah, I'm happy to answer that one. That's uh, would really be more of a Justine question, but uh, yes. since I'm filling in as lower school principal as well, I'll, I'll take that one. Um, you know, I would say it's been surprisingly high um, with that acknowledging that there definitely has been a dip. Um, previously, we had more sections in KG than we did this year. Um, not a lot more, but we did have some, but we did have to, we do have a slightly smaller number of sections because the kids are online. And it's no surprise that it's harder for a three or a four year old to participate academically online than it is for a 17 or an 18 year old. Um, but we have had really, really positive feedback from those parents who are in KG um, this year and who have stayed for the entire year. Um, it's just a lot more work. My KG teachers do an amazing job of making those lessons, those online lessons as exciting and engaging as possible um, because we know the little guys have a, a slightly smaller attention span. Um, and so we've, we've had good feedback. We, uh, we are hopeful uh, that next year things will be more normal, but if they aren't, then we'll continue to do what we've done successfully this year in KG. I think this next question is for you as well, Mr. Enver. What are the advantages and disadvantages for Jim's American and Wellington School Education? As a country lead, Mark, this is catered to you. <laughs> yeah, it is. It's a tough one though because I'm also the head of school. So, and right now I'm, I'm representing the American School. So I should be telling you why I'm I'm way better than my my friend David across the across the uh, the way. Right. But that just wouldn't be fair. Um, you know, I, I, I think it's a, it's a matter of personal choice. I get asked, asked this question all the time. Some people prefer MacBooks. Um, some people prefer um, not MacBooks. Well, I just had a blank. Somebody else chip in. Help me out here. HP, um, right? HP, so, yeah. You prefer <laughs> MacBooks, obviously. Yeah. <laughs> I'm on a MacBook right now. Sorry. Um, but, you know, it's it, do, do you want to write, do you want a tablet or an iPad? I mean, it, they, the American curriculum can do anything the British curriculum can do. Conversely, the British curriculum can do anything the American curriculum can do. Um, I used to get a lot, and, and maybe even 15, 20 years ago, um, if for sure you knew your kid was going to England for college, it would have made a lot more sense to go to a British school. If for sure you knew your kid was going to America, it would have made a lot more sense going to an American school. But the world's become so international we have kids from our British school that go to schools all over the world, including America and Canada. And we have kids from our American curriculum school that go to schools all over the world, including England, Ireland, Scotland, Wales, um, you know, you name it. So I think it's really just a question of, of feel. The American curriculum schools tend to get a reputation. If I hear the reputation easier, that one I, I take umbrage to, we are not easier. In fact, in right. some ways, I think we're actually harder um, because we foster more independence. There's more independence built into our curriculum for student choice and voice and for the way our teachers present material, um, which allows each American school to have its own sort of flair. Um, but that independence and in learning puts that, that, that need for uh, inquiry-based student-centered learning that's, that's not an easier thing necessarily. Um, but I think it challenges our, skids, or our kids and I, I hope they come out with, with those lifelong learning skills we've been talking about. Um, the British curriculum, one advantage of that is it's very, very regimented and you're not gonna deviate. If you go to, to Gems Wellington School, you're gonna get the same British education that you would get from another British school here in terms of the curriculum. Um, but it's an excellent school, similar facilities, um, great. It's, you know, I, I, if, if I was looking for a bridge curriculum school, I would, I could highly recommend that one as well. Right. And then a second question from Mr. Inver as well. Are you providing extra English courses at the, on the weekend or after hours for kids? 
No, we've had um, we've had clubs and things like that in the past. Um, after school activities, um, our teachers, uh, if if a student needs additional language, um, my well, it's yeah. Anyway, I I can speak as a parent whose whose daughter is a, is a non native English speaker that. There's lots of supportive materials and information and things given to to boost um, that language development. Um, I'm not a hundred percent sure if that answers the the question or not, but hope but hopefully it does. All right. So I think this next uh, next one is a two part. So don't answer yet. Um, this could be for Mr. Gregory and for you, Mr. Lentz. Uh, heard that bullying seen in most schools in Qatar. Some of the schools don't want to lose some students, and they are not doing enough to prevent bullying. Uh, what kind of actions uh, do you have that prevent bullying in gyms? It's a good question, very good question. Yeah, I can jump in on that one, I guess. Um, so uh, I don't know how much I want to say, but um, <laughs> a few years ago, we did have issues with uh, discipline and behavior. Um, and sort of when I was made assistant principal, maybe four years ago, that was my role and my job for the full year. Um, and we came down with a fairly strict uh, policy on bullying or misbehavior and um, we like to be very clear with consequences and sort of um, there is consequences for actions and um, but it's one of those lines that we draw is its behavior isn't accepted here we have a really positive yeah. culture with some really amazing students and, and we don't want um, one or two students coming in and upsetting that whole and um, you know community and um, so we give people chances and, and, and we, we lay out what um, what the rules are and, and we want students to abide by it. But it's not, that's one of the ones where it's students, uh, if they can't learn to behave here and they and can't follow our, our guidelines and respect our teachers and their fellow classmates, um, they won't be welcome back. Um, so, yeah. All right. Anything on that, Mark? Or uh, no, I just to reiterate what he said. I mean, there, you you can't, you don't get the highest parent satisfaction rate in a network if your kids getting bullied. Parents, those kids don't come home happy, right? And you, uh, Mr. Enbar, you put in there that that um, you know schools don't want to lose students. Well, we don't want to lose students, but but not because of enrollments. I don't want to lose students because I don't. Any time I have to kick a kid out, I feel like I've failed them. I want to help them learn and change their behavior. But ultimately, if they don't learn and change their behavior, Eamon and I have kicked plenty of kids out of school over the last couple of years. If that's what's best for the community, then that's what would happen. Indeed, indeed. Another question for Mr. Enver. Do you have computer coding lessons for kids in gyms? Uh, we offer uh, IT information technology classes, 6th through 12th. Uh, next year, we're growing in the high school program, they're gonna have another advanced placement computer programming course. Um, one is called AP Computer Science Principles, is the first sort of one uh, that we've offered over the last few years. And IT Computer Science Principles A is the next course. And um, so that's, it's it's programming, it's coding, there's a few things like that. We did offer and we did compete in one or two robotics and um, after school activities, uh, Mr. V at the time, we haven't done it this year just because of COVID, but um, he's still with us and I'm sure he's interested in offering that again if we had people interested. But there is coding in, in the IT classes if you selected that as an elective. Right, all right. Uh, this is another one I want to bring up and I'll put my email address here as well for Lena. I sent an email asking about the discount for the old families, 10% did not get a reply. So I'm gonna put my email address here because we don't want you to be without a reply, all right? Email me, um, I'll take care of it, Lena, okay? All right, so, ah, we have a GAQ parent here. Lovely parent, Carla, how are you? How are you? So here's her question here. Would like to know if the school has any plan of having the students vaccinated. Mr. Mark, I'll throw that to you. <laughs> Uh, yeah, that's one of those that we definitely have to follow the MOE lead in. Um, we're lucky enough that the, the head of the Q, I think I can say this, I hope I can say this, but the, the head of the QNCC is uh, uh, vaccination efforts is one of our parents. Um, absolutely wonderful man. Um, and so we, we had some, Mr. Gregory and I had some discussions with him about that the other day. Um, 
They are looking at plans uh, nationwide to get kids 16 to 18 vaccinated. Um, they're well aware of the, the latest Pfizer updates that state um, that Pfizer uh, should be safe between uh, over the age of 12, but they want to gather further data um, on that to make sure um, that, that it is in fact safe before they would proceed below kids uh, under the age of 16. Um, but he, he was very, very positive about the, the vaccination plans in Qatar and um, hopeful about what schooling is going to look like next year in terms of us being back on campus uh, in, a, in a normal way. All right. Thank you, Carla, for that question. I, I hope you and your family are doing more than well. All right. Um, Mr. Omar with another question. He has some really good questions. Everyone today has some really good questions so far. I really appreciate them. Uh, what qualities are required for teachers to join gym staff? How many prior years of experience, et cetera? Great question. Um, yeah, that's, it sounds like I'm another one teed up for me. Um, you know, there, that's a, that's a, that's a great question. Mm -hmm. Um, hiring, I think hiring staff is probably the, one of the single most important things that I do at the school, I'm involved in all of those decisions. Nobody gets hired at the school. Um, not even, not just our teachers, our, our support staff. Um, nobody gets hired to work at GAQ that I haven't met personally. Um, I take the lead on all on hiring of all teachers. Um, there's some very clear cutter guidelines that um, honestly sometimes make it a little more difficult. Um, age requirements and things like that are a little bit more regimented uh, than, than some countries I've looked at. Um, but really as much as years are, of experience are important, um, teachers have to be qualified in their area. I'm not going to hire a math teacher who's not a math teacher or an art teacher who's not an art teacher. Um, all my teachers are going to have legitimate teaching qualifications, um, from a legitimately recognized, um, institution. Um, but even more important to me than prior years of experience is, does that person have the right attitude? Are they going to be hardworking? Are they going to care about your child? Are they going to put your individual child first? Are they going to have good parent relationships with you as a parent? Are they going to fit well on my team? Um, all of those things. Um, I, I, I can teach a weaker teacher how to teach if, if I make any errors there. But uh, I was, as I said, I was a counselor before I was a teacher. It's a much longer road if I've got to help somebody work on their personality. So I think having somebody who's really the right fit for our team that's going to fit in well and, and support our students and our parents, that's, that's, that's a really important quality for me. Um, so hopefully that helps to answer that. All right. Yes. And another question here from Mr. O'Mara. I can answer this one. What is the typical daily schedule for students? I have seen info saying school starts at 730 and the others say 750. So got confused. And when does the day end? This is a very good question and example of pre-COVID and COVID. <laughs> so 730 is our COVID start time, right? And what I mean by that is just after, you know, the COVID started here, we went online. Ever since then, for this year, we have started school at 7.30 in the morning. Uh, we end school at 2.15, unless you have a little one that's in pre-K or KG1 that ends at 1. But everyone else that's uh, KG2 and above, uh, they will end at 2.15, okay? Now, for pre-COVID, we started at 7.50 in the morning. All right. And I believe we ended our day at 2.30, 2.45. 2.45 was the last uh, period. Yeah, 2.45. Um, so 7.50 to 2.45. But that was when we did not have COVID. And so hopefully that answers your question. And that's probably why you have two different answers uh, for that. one. All right. All right. Mr. Inver, are you providing virtual courses after school due to COVID-19? Principals, I'll leave it to you for this one. Um. Not technically, but what we do offer is, uh, we call it office hours, which is essentially yeah. after the school is finished, um, where teacher Zoom links are opened. And if students have questions and they're doing work at home and they have a, they want to ask a question about something that they've been given their homework or whatnot, they can just click the link, they join, and the teacher's sitting there waiting to answer the question. Um, and I think plan after the Ramadan break is we're going to have office hours four days a week. Um, you know, so it's four hours added into a week where we're 
where students can just jump on and, and ask questions that they've the, if they have any sort of queries but at the moment class wise outside of covid no but i can speak for my advanced placement teachers that a lot of them did do after school classes and offered support at the weekends and did sort of free lessons and stuff and um, and we record all our lessons and put those up as well so that um, students have access to it after and um, hopefully that answers the question i can um i can build on that a little bit too um you know we we talk about in in this learning environment we talk about synchronous or meaning a live class versus asynchronous or a not live class and so the asynchronous work that is done outside of those live sessions um we've put a lot of time and energy into thinking about that and reflecting upon that and i think last year when this hit us there was a bit of panic maybe with my teachers, you know, because we care about our students so much. And I think we overcompensated. I think we gave feedback last year was that we probably gave too much work um, outside of the regular class hours. And, and I got a lot of parent feedback that like my kids working around the clock, they're sitting in front of their computer from the minute they wake up in the morning until the minute they go to bed. Um, and that's, that's not healthy. And that's, that's, it comes back to that idea of quality versus quantity that we talked about. And so we've really put a lot of time and energy. We've had professional developments with our teachers. We've had tons of staff meetings about how do we make those asynchronous lessons really quality experiences. And then when we talk about independence with our students, how do we build in for that kid who needs more and needs more challenge work that they don't get all their homework done and they feel bored versus that kid who's really struggling in this learning environment because it's different and not everybody's able to, to work at the same speed. So how do we meet both of their needs? Um, and we've had some really creative, flexible plans, I think, that, that really help to work with both ends, our, our really high-end student or our student who's struggling to make sure that those after-school lessons are, are meeting their needs. Um, and this last parent uh, survey that we put back was an incredibly, positive and supportive regarding uh, the changes that we've made to our, our learning environment. So thanks to those yeah. parents who filled out the survey. Definitely, definitely. Alex, this question is coming to you. And I, and I think I'm gonna mispronounce this name and names are very valuable, but I'm gonna try my best. Ebike Edmaka um, has a question. Hello, thank you so much for this. I would like to know my elder son is grade 10 right now. Younger one is in grade five. Is there IB diploma? Uh, what is the last day to register to gyms? Because unfortunately we are still waiting for our QID. And then they are studying on online school in the US. So Alex, can you answer the more about the last day to register, the um, online school and coming from abroad to cut their question? Sure, yeah, this is obviously a process that we're pretty familiar with. Uh, we get a lot of students from the U.S., all over the world, really, but <clears throat> primarily from the U.S. And um, obviously, it could be a daunting uh, task coming over here, moving your whole family and getting registered for school. So uh, there, um, the whole QAD process varies for every family, depending on which company you're working with. And, um, you know, the most important, most important thing I would say, most important factor is ask your company how long do you think it will take for them to process my QID, and then how long will it take for me to then sponsor my family? Because it's different for every company. Then you basically want to get that amount of time and subtract it from the start of school, and you want to arrive and cut there around that time frame. You give yourself plenty of time to get the QID. Uh, there is no last day to register per se. The ministry does give us some deadlines on international transfers, but they're not until January 31st. Um, and then even after that, you know, there is some flexibility. We, we, we can you know, pursue exceptions to get your student to register um, past that deadline. But again, January 31st, if you're looking at, you know, you know, moving over in, in the given time frame, there's plenty of time for you to, you know, to get work through all those formalities to get your QID. Um, as far as the IB diploma, no, I mean, I believe we are an AP school. Uh, I'll let Mr. Gregory go into that more into more detail. Um, but it's not an IB school, right? It's, it's, it's an American school with AP curriculum. Um, Eamon, I don't know if you have anything else you want to talk yeah, about. Yeah, with, with the advanced placement program, it's sort of, um, it's similar to the IB program, but the IB program, basically, you have to take all of the subjects at once, where the AP, you only have to take, you get, you get to pick which subjects you want to do. 
Um, AP Capstone Diploma is probably the equivalent to the IB Diploma, which is where a student has to take the AP Research and AP Seminar course, and then an additional five um, or four AP courses. And then they get this thing called AP Capstone, which is a relatively new program. I think it only started with College Board maybe four or five years ago. Um, but we started it last year and we're going into our first group next year for the possible AP diploma. Um, but happy to talk more about that if you send me an email. All right, thank you so much. And I think we are at the end of the Q&A session. And so I firstly want to thank all of the uh, guests that came on the live stream today and took some time to listen to us babble <laughs> for an hour and a half about why we love this school. <laughs> But really just to give you some information to help you make the best decision or to tell other people that there's another option that's an American or a British school next door if you're looking for that as well. So I really appreciate uh, Mr. Gregory being here, Mr. Stimmen, uh, Mr. Lentz. And um, before we close out, you know, definitely want to say again, Ramadan Kareem, uh, Ramadan Mubarak, and definitely for the Eid holiday that's coming up, you know, Definitely, uh, inshallah, that'll be a good time for everyone there as well. Um, and then I want to close out with a quote before we go, all right? And this quote made me think about our school and our logo. So if you hang out with chickens, you're going to cluck. But if you hang out with eagles, you're going to fly, okay? And Alex is from Philadelphia, so we're not talking about the eagles in Philadelphia, Mr. Alex. You know, we're talking about just regular eagles. But why this is important is because we are the raptors, G-A-A-Q raptors. Eagles are raptors. Eagles soar, they fly high. So why don't you soar with us for 2021, 2022 school year? I'll leave you with that. Thanks everyone, have a good day.